matter of fact, I do think we're alone now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thanks for joining me. I am so glad to be back home. I mean, it was an amazing summer tour. Really, really amazing. I went to a lot of fun places, made a lot of great music, made new friends, saw old friends, jammed. It was great. But, you know, it's nice to be home. And it's nice to be chilling out with all of my gear at home and making a lot of noise. And it got me to thinking about... Uh, all the things I was teaching this summer and all the things I picked up this summer and one of those things is follow through following through sticking to something and seeing it through to the very very end and I'd like to talk to you about doing the same thing while you're experimenting with your mountain dulcimer with chords with just kind of messing around taking melody into chords and just seeing what happens whether you have a song in mind or whether you're just kind of noodling and messing around so let me talk a little bit about that and show you a little exercise that I've been doing all summer and teaching to my students all summer and hoping that maybe you'll join in with me because it really is the key to unlocking uh, your arrangement capabilities on the mountain dulcimer. And uh, let me go ahead and start off with the three basic chord shapes. Typically we have four, but I'll show them to you here. This is DAD tuning I'm in right now. And our three basic chord shapes are the slant, the extended slant, and the L shape. And we're just calling them by the way they look, basically. Um, so the slant chord is tic-tac-toe, three frets in a row in a diagonal shape like this. Sometimes it gives you major chords, sometimes it gives you minor chords. And the root of the chord is on the middle string, but you don't have to know that. All you have to know is that this diagonal will get you a lot of fun stuff. Now, sometimes it also gets you chords that are not major or minor. It gets you dominant seventh chords and diminished chords like that. So there is the slant chord. Then we have the extended slant, which is tic tac skip a fret toe. And the root is on the melody string. At least in that shape it is. When you move it this way, the root's on the bass string, but played this way, the root's on the melody string. And then we've got the L-shaped chord, and if you draw the L-shaped chord, you can see uh, here it's like a backwards upside down L, but it goes across and then up to the top like that. We can flip this one over. When like this, the L-shaped chord root is on the bass string. When like this, the L-shaped chord root is on the melody string. And the same thing with all three of these chord shapes. Sometimes you get major chords and sometimes you get minor chords. It's just the nature of our instrument, basically. And you can get other funky chords if you don't create the same spacing. And you can get a lot of really interesting types of chords that we can kind of play around with. All right, so those are the three basic chords. There is one more chord shape that we use a lot. In fact, our open tuning is this shape, and that's the bar chord. The bar chord is all the way across, whether it be open 0, 0, 0 or 1, 1, 1, or 2, 2, 2, pressing down on all the strings all the way across. So the root's on the bass and on the melody string. Why is that? Because this is a root 5 chord, what we're playing here. So think about a D major chord is D, F sharp, and A. And when our DAD tuning has no F sharp in it, no middle of the chord, all we have is the bottom of the chord, D, and the top of the chord, A. The same goes for all of our bar shapes here. Each one of these is a chord missing its middle note. But the root and the melody string are the same, and so we can call it that. So this could be D, it could be a major or a minor chord, E, major or minor, and the one and a half fret, if you have that, F, major or minor. The second fret, F sharp, major or minor. If you don't touch anything else, that bar can be either a major or a minor chord. So it's really good for us because we can fake things like a B major, and we don't have a D sharp, we don't need to. We can simply play a bar five and call it B major, or we can simply call it B minor. If somebody else is singing the note or playing the note that we're missing, those all work really, really well. But more importantly, with the bar chord, a lot of the times that is providing us everything that we need to play melody against. So we can move this bar chord, for example, if we 
have an open strum, we know we can play on the melody string anywhere and it'll sound good. So when you get onto a bar chord, say the first fret, E, we can use our thumb and that will give us all the harmonies and other flavors that we need. kinds of things we can do with our thumb on all three strings as long as we hold that bar down like that and then we can change what the lowest note is and the harmonies to that by simply moving the bar up and now we also have access to another scale or a number of series of scales so ultimately whatever we're doing we're moving the bar to give us a foundation to dance upon and then we're using our thumb to hit the melody strings so we can change chords around as opposed to being in just the one drone and staying there all the time. So here's what I would like to do. First of all, one of the things that's a really, really good thing to know is where all of these chord shapes are up and down the fretboard. So, you know, if you do your L shape chord in an E minor, it's also good to know where your E minor is in a slant chord. It's also good to know where your E minor is in a extended slant chord, but also I want you to notice one thing here. These chords all connect together by one note. Like here's E minor. So we've got E, G, and B are those three notes. There's E, there's G, there's B. That is the root, the third, and the fifth of the chord. So what we can do here is this note here is going to be connected to the next shape. And we know, because I just played it, that this is a shape for E minor. So there's that note that we were playing in this shape down there, and it is shared between this shape and this shape. So no matter what you do, you're always gonna have one note that you're gonna use again on that particular fret in that same spot as you move up. So check this out. I'm gonna look at the next E minor, which is this shape, and take a look at that. That's a note we just touched, and now it's part of this. So what do you want to bet that this note is a part of another E minor shape? Well, certainly it's the octave version of this, but we're going to invert it so we can keep that E in the same location, right? So we hit it here, and then this, there's our B, and there's our G. So we've just flipped that chord over, but every single one of these chords has one note that it shares between those shapes. So it's like a little popcorn trail leading you along to where the next chord shape you're not far away from it once you have moved from one chord shape to the next. So that's kind of cool. So it's a good thing to kind of go through and look at all your Ds and all your shapes as you walk up. And then once you're used to moving all of the chords all up and down the fretboard, then here is what I'd like to do or suggest you try and do. You don't have to think about a tune that you know. You're pretty much making, the, uh, making this up as you go, but basically just Start moving around as if you're playing a melody, and every single time you would like to put in a chord, think about what that might be before you get there, and when you get your finger there, go ahead and piece in the other two notes that'll make that chord, and make it whatever chord you want to. Don't think about trying to make a tune that's going to make sense, or that's going to make people dance or sing, or anything like that. The whole idea here is to kid commit, basically, to fully commit to every single time you want to lay in a chord, you lay in something. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about here. I'm just going to kind of move along and go. find yourself at a little stopping point, that's a good point to stop and go. Of course it's a good place to stop. It's a stopping point. I haven't had my coffee yet, I'm sorry. Anyway, 
the whole idea here is not to plan something out because you'll be thinking about things differently. Allow yourself to kind of just move through and then lay down any chord that's going to mesh together with the note that you're playing. Remember that you don't necessarily have to just go down from the melody. You can also build up from the melody as well. results that you get out of that and you know if you already sort of know a little bit about organization of harmonies and chords moving your progressions around then you might have some ideas about how you want to finish up some different lines where you want to go and that's fine too the idea here is that no matter what level you're at you should be able to sort of just poke around and challenge yourself to always come up with a little something interesting every single time you play whether it be eight measures 16 measures or a full song that you make up on the fly. And what's really neat is you can learn some stuff from yourself while you're in the moment, focusing, record what you're doing on your phone and listen to it later. You might listen and go, I don't remember doing that. That's rather cool. I think I'll do it again. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next week.